Hi, this is Robin Bremer, and today I want to share with you how you can know God's will. I know that it is one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, I, I want to know um, God like you know God. I want to have a relationship like you do. I want to see and hear Him like you do. And one of the things that helps me, <coughs> excuse me, to see and know God is the Scriptures. The more I discover in the Scriptures that it's God's will for me to know and understand His will, I just get set free. So let's go over one of the scriptures that I use that God has showed me. Okay, this is uh, the Father of glory has given unto me the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in knowledge of Him. So I've already been given the spirit of wisdom and I've ever already been given the revelation and the knowledge of him so right there it's showing you that God wants you to know him to understand him to experience him and why is that that your that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened would know what is the hope of his calling in other words what what is what is your mission what is the goal what is your passion what is the thing your gifts that he's empowered you with what is the reason they put you on earth uh, what is it that you have within you that only you can do for this world and what are the riches of the glory which it's, a, it's inheritance in the saints it's our inheritance and what is the exceeding greatness of his power which he works in Christ when he was when he seated him when he seated him far above okay when Christ when he seated him he raised that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places now we're in Christ Jesus so we're at his right hand in heavenly places now look at where principalities and powers far above all principalities powers mights and dominion dominions and every name name now they are in heavenly places but we are far above them and he put all things under his feet he is the head over all things and the church is his body the fullness of him so right there it's showing you who you are in Christ that you are in seated in heavenly places above principalities powers and dominions and that you've been given that authority and power. And then if you go down to Colossians, that was Ephesians 1, 17 and 23. Then if you go to Colossians 1, 9 and 11. And by the way, these are two scriptures I confess every morning. There are two of about 12 scriptures. Colossians 1, 9 and 11 says, Be filled with the knowledge of His will. See, God wants you to be filled with the knowledge of His will. He's not trying to hide it from you or keep it from you. And the more you know these scriptures and confess them, the more they'll become real to you. Now, He wants you to know the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Why? That you would walk worthy of Him. In other words, Jesus paid the price. Now, you need to take what He paid His blood for you to have. Okay? He wants you to walk worthy of what he did, what he paid for, and being fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glory, power, glorious power. So you see, those are things that he wants you to know. Now, what is his will? What are some of the things that he accomplished? Well, this is one of my favorite scriptures. In fact, this is one of the scriptures that set me free to walk in God's presence and power. To know that healing is always mine. Always, always mine. God doesn't uh, teach me or, or get glory out of me being sick. He doesn't uh, make my healing take a long time so I can learn a lesson. Healing is always mine. And these are the two scriptures that I'm going to give you now are the ones that changed my life. And this is something that I know that I know that I know. And you can know this uh, so that when you lay hands on people, you know that their healing has to come. Ephesians 3, 10 and 12, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church. In other words, I'm going to know this wisdom and I'm going to tell it to the principalities, powers, and heavenly places. 
what am I going to tell principalities and powers and mights and dominions that are heavenly places and I'm seating, seated far above them? I'm going to tell them, well, according to the eternal purposes which he already accomplished in Christ Jesus. Okay, what are the eternal purposes which he accomplished in Christ Jesus? Well, people are saved. All they have to do is receive it. People are healed. All they have to do is receive it. So, I'm going to tell those principalities, powers, mights, and dominions to get away from people that I'm praying for to get saved, to, uh, to leave when I command people to be healed, and everything that he already accomplished when he died on the cross. He became poor that we could become rich. So the demons have no right to make us poor. And it also says here, we have boldness and access with confidence. Boldness and access, access to what? To heavenly places. Okay, we have boldness and access to heavenly places and confidence through faith in him. Now this is what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and I have this on my website. You can look at, uh, I have this scripture broken down and what it means in the original language. And this is a lifesaver scripture that you need to memorize. Surely he has borne our griefs. What does griefs mean? Sicknesses diseases, afflictions, sadness, evil, and calamity. That's what Jesus bore on the cross and carried our sorrow. What else did he carry on the cross? All physical and mental grief and sorrow and pain. All of it he took on the cross. Yet we did not esteem him smitten, stricken and smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. What was he wounded for? For our sin our rebellion, our guilt, our guilt punishment for transgressions and our offering. Okay, we didn't even, we weren't even born yet. We didn't even make one sin. So, when he died and he paid the price, he paid the price for all this, when he died, we weren't even born yet. So when we get born again, he paid the price for all of our sins, past, present, and future. And he was bruised for our iniquity. He was bruised for my guilt, your guilt, our condition, our consequences, and our punishment of sin. Okay. And the chastisement, the correction, the punishment for our peace was upon him. Well, what did he pay the price for? For us to have completeness, to have safety, soundness in the body, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, whole, entire contentment, friendship, with God and covenant relationship was upon him and with his stripes we were healed. In other words, our peace has already been played for. All this stuff has already been paid for by the blood of Jesus. Now, what we need to do is when we don't have those things, we need to go back up here to the scripture and we as a church need to make known to the principalities and powers and heavenly places what Jesus already accomplished on the cross. That he already accomplished all this on the cross for us and so when we know that we know that we will not receive sickness disease poverty lack or fear or any of those things so those are some pretty hefty and awesome scriptures that are life-changing so my name is Robin Bremer I want you to subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel which you'll see here I want you to also go to my website, robinbremer.net, if you're not there already, and sign up for my monthly newsletter and get the free book that I'm offering and uh, about angels or uh, whichever one I'm offering right now. And be blessed by it, and I will talk to you later.